Football Manager have released a secret trailer for FM23 that no one has seen yet because it's on Instagram. It reveals a ton of new features to the game though, so today we're going to break that trailer down. But first of all, I'm going to let you guys watch it uninterrupted. <laughs> And that's the trailer. It's a really good one. I don't know why it's not posted anywhere else, especially as it came out three days ago on Instagram. So, I mean, follow me on Instagram um, because you might get to see these trailers because I'm a football manager personality. It might get pushed to you a little bit more maybe. So uh, link down in the description. But let's sit down and actually go through this together, shall we? So the first thing they go through, obviously, are the new UEFA licenses, which we already know about. But obviously, it's not going to be just a pretty logo in the game. If you play in the Bundesliga, for example, you'll already be familiar with the custom graphics that come on screen when you're at the start of a match with a live table or the, the team sheets. And when people score in game, um, obviously, it comes up with Bundesliga graphics in there. So I imagine that sort of stuff for the Champions League, Europa League, Europa Conference League will also be implemented into the game. But... They're also using, as you can see, all of the Champions League colours and all their sort of uh, design language for the draw for the Champions League. And that makes me think there's going to be a lot more branding in-game rather than just in the match engine. And I think for the cup draws in particular, this is what this is suggesting. I think we're going to see a whole revamp of the cup draw screen. Currently in game, it's really bizarre. All the ties are at the top of the screen, all the teams that are left uh, are shoehorned into a tiny section at the bottom of the screen. And then unless you're in the FA Cup first round when there's like a million ties, the rest of the screen is just left blank and empty. And it's really like just, Jar it's bizarre really. Now perhaps it's been added onto the trade just to add some context essentially, but you can see here there is a host uh, who will join Man City. Well, hopefully this is the thing actually in the game as well. Um, I am one of those people that will sit through the cup draws in Football Manager and I'll press begin draw and sit there for five minutes while it just does it automatically as they just go through team by team. I love the excitement of it if you watch me on stream. Uh, we always get really involved into the, the Champions League draws and things like that. Um, so you can see on the screen it says live update and overview. Uh, I guess overview is like a quick way to do things, but if you want to sit through it, you've got this live update with a host talking you through everything. And that's quite immersive. I quite like that. If that's actually the case and that's going to be in the game, that's class. Also, another big takeaway from this as well is the fact that Man City are being used in this with their logo, which does mean they are fully licensed in FM23. So much the same as uh, Watford have been in previous years, Man City are now fully licensed in the Premier League. I presume this means that other clubs in the Premier League won't be licensed, like don't expect to see Liverpool uh, or anything like that. But Man City fully licensed in the game. And I think this is hilarious. Think back to last year when Football Manager were being sued by Manchester United for using the name Manchester United in the game. That's why it's now referred to as Man UFC, I believe, uh, because there was a big lawsuit from Man United against Sports Interactive. Um, it was a bit scary, I think, for them, to be fair. So either it's a big coincidence or they've gone directly to Man City and said, can we license you in the game, please, um, as a bit of a kick in the teeth. I, I think it's hilarious, personally, that Man City are, re are licensed in the game now. I think it's, <laughs> it's great. But also, another team that are going to be licensed in the game as well. If we press play again, uh, you can see Juventus are in there, licensed, so no more Zebra, which is quite nice. But hitting play once again, uh, we then go into more insights, and you can see here we've got um, the data hub essentially. We're going to have some more things in the data hub. I'll loop it again so you guys can see, but it looks like the data hub is getting a whole lot of new things added to it. In this example, it's the expected attacking outputs and midfielders. Now, personally, I didn't use the data hub nearly enough in FM22, but I do know it's a very powerful tool and having more data to analyze within it can only be a good thing, right? And obviously, they're also using Man City players in this to demonstrate this as well, furthering their new license agreements with all the player faces in the game. So uh, I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully this will help with your transfer policies and signing new players and being able to plan for the future, which is a clever bit of foreshadowing. If we press play again, you can see the next thing that comes up is plan for the future. And here we go. This is something that I'll loop over again uh, so you guys can watch this bit over and over again while I talk through it. Now, last week, Football Manager on Twitter released a teaser trailer for a video coming out this week uh, where they're going to go in depth with all of the headline features. I imagine it's going to be quite a long video where they're interviewing people who make the game about the changes coming to the game. It'll be 
be quite an interesting watch, but that's going to come later on this week. Um, and they teased a the trailer for it, essentially saying that there's going to be a big thing called the planner coming into the game. And I think this, and I'll loop it over a few times so you can watch it, uh, gives a really good visual representation of what this planner is going to be. We start off with the experience matrix, and this goes through your team's experience. In this case, for Juventus, you've got the option to look at the whole team or just one position. Now I like to keep a development production line in my teams, often as a senior player with an emerging talent behind them and then someone for the long term in the youth team for each position. And that can involve keeping tabs on well over 30 players and that can get quite tricky sometimes. So being able to actually see in an easy way the developing, emerging, peak and experienced players in your team in an order to try and keep tabs on things a little better, it's actually a really nice addition to the game. It adds a nice quality of life update to the game. Also, players develop at different rates. I'll be really interested to see how dynamic this player development actually is because, for example, Deli Alley in real life peaked at like 21 uh, and is now not that great. Uh, whereas Jimmy Vardy, for example, took a long time to get to the top and peaked in his very, very late 20s, early 30s and uh, is still at his peak, basically, you could argue, at Leicester. Maybe not this season, but, you know, in the past couple of seasons or so, still bagging goals for fun. But after this, you get to the squad planner and this is where you can plan out your formations and, I assume, talking to your coaches can predict player development and where you're going to have issues in your squad in the next couple of seasons. You can move from your current season to next season to the season afterwards to be able to plan ahead. Although personally, I'd quite like to see up to five years of this. I can plan for five years in the future because, for example, I might get a golden generation of players come through my youth development. Uh, they've all got five-star potential. They're 16 years old. In five years' time, they're 21. That's when they should be breaking into that first team. I'd like to plan that far ahead because sometimes I, I forget the wonder kids that I've got in the team because I sign so many sometimes. So if I could get those wonder kids coming and I can say right in five years time these are going to be first team players. Um, I've got a right wing or a left back for example. I'm not going to spend a ton of money on a wonder kid right wing or left back um, but I might forget that if I can't look five years in the future. Uh, maybe that's me being a bit picky for example but I would like to see up to five years for this to be planned ahead essentially. Now this bit isn't actually in this trailer but for the teaser trailer that they did for the big feature video coming up later this week they did say you can move anyone from your shortlist into the planner which essentially means you can use this planner to actually bring players from outside your team in so you can really plan for the future and think right maybe I want to sign Messi for my team how would he fit into this team right now so you add him to your shortlist you get a full scout report on him you slot him in there and see how he fits in and I think this is a really nice step forward actually um, to plan your squads, plan your transfers, because there's not really a great transfer planner in the game. For me personally, uh, I'll just make big, long shortlists, call it transfer targets, and I have a rough idea of what positions that I want. I'll add like three or four players to that position. But it's a little bit tricky to somehow find how they're going to fit into your team. To have a centralised hub for this um, is a good big nice update to the game, good quality of life, uh, and adds longevity to the game as well. I mean, there literally is no way to plan transfers in the game right now, really. When I do it, I use a pen and paper. I, I've got, I can't find my notebook right now, but I literally have a pen and paper with notebooks full of like the transfer policies. To actually have that in the game now, baked in, um, will save a lot of paper and trees. So yeah, pretty good. And then of course we come to the end of the advert where it's available from the 8th of November. Now if you want to pre-order the game and get access to the beta, everything good like that, you can get it from my affiliate link with Fanatical down in the description. Uh, currently you can buy it on there for cheaper than Steam, which is obviously a win-win. I get a kickback, you get it for cheaper than Steam, so we all win there. But Fanatical also have a really big promotion right now. Now I could make a fancy graphic, um, but I'm just going to show you the DM that they sent me, essentially. Um, and actually it's a really cool promotion to be fair. If you spend $10, £8, pounds, 10 euros, which you will do buying FM23, uh, then you get some rewards, which are pretty cool. You get a scratch card for some random rewards. It could be a 10%, 15% or 25% discount code. It could be some monetary coupons, $1, $10. Uh, it could be some free randomly selected games, including uh, Two Point Campers, which is a pretty new game, actually, and I want to get my hands on myself personally. So um, extra benefits, essentially, if you want to order from Fanatical. They are a Sega authorized retailer. They get all of their codes from Sega the company that actually make the game so uh, it's all legit uh, I won't be sending you to a dodgy place at all so if you want to help me and my channel out uh, but also get some nice rewards as well with Fanatical there's a link down in the description to grab a game from them
Also, sorry for the, the lack of content recently. You can probably tell by my voice, uh, I'm still not really 100% better. Uh, I'm still a bit ill. Uh, and even doing this like 15, 20 minute video, I, I can feel my throat talking. So like a stream, I want to stream, but uh, I can't because like 20 minutes of talking, I can't do it basically, which is tough. Um, and also it's the end of a game life cycle. So I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a break before we dive headfirst into FM23 and there'll be a ton of content there which I'm looking forward to. Um, but of course, there is more Foot Manager content on my channel right now, so I'll put a video up here for you guys to watch if you've not seen it already. How do I stop recording? That's the, 